what is going on guys it is your voice so here is a video here today and uh, we're bringing you guys a photoshop tutorial your own very cool we're calling it like clean overhaul overlay well, i don't really know yet but the purpose of this video is i've never done an overlay that consists of me also doing something to help you guys put your spot for something like this uh like a top donor spot and top like or recent sub or whatnot so that's what i'm doing in today's video and also of course coming in with this clean clutch looking uh overlay so you don't have to always do the whole bottom part if you guys think about it you guys don't even have to do this part here <laughs> like this right here right you don't have to do this but you can just keep it at this at this part right here which also still looks pretty aesthetically nice so oh with that being said like of course it looks really good like all if you had like this is my pretend twitch name um not pretend twitch name my actual switch but i'm talking about pretend recent sub and whatnot right so as you can see it looks really really good and really nice and clean like i said before and uh yeah i know for a fact you guys are going to definitely enjoy it and it's not too hard whatsoever really it's just a different uh gradient settings and whatnot but uh yeah it's gonna be really dope really cool let's just hop right into this thing right now um this actually took me like an hour to do just to kind of like figure out how i'm going to formulate it and try to figure out what i want to really i guess execute wise um but hopefully it doesn't take that long whatsoever and uh i can kind of break it down a little bit better for you guys now that i actually know what i'm doing and I guess the first thing I'm going to do is probably, like, work on this sort of, like, um, part right here. Like, this entire, like, piece that's holding this. And then we'll do the bottom part right after that. So, hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video today. So, 20 likes on the video equals a secret down below. And I did set my haircut appointment. So, next video, we're good to go. <laughs> Look at this mess. Um, so, yeah. Let's just jump right into this thing. All right, homie. So, first things first. Let's go ahead and give you guys the document size. And that would be, if I went to file new, that would be 1920 by 1080. Resolution's at 300 just so I can make our text. That's basically resolution's about print and whether you're doing it on print or web. The only reason why I like to use 300 is, which is pretty much like the print default, is I love how it is... If like I did my text, right? If you guys just, just a little, a little quick little side note, little tip. Um, if your text like for eleven, you see how like small mine might be for eleven for you guys is like at like I guess uh, in your brains, yours on your Photoshop might be like, like this might be how your eleven size looks like, right? It would be like this, something like that, right? Like a little bit more bigger. I just like it, just kind of like minuscule. So sometimes it gives me like a bit of a problem. I have to change the resolution. But if anyone ever wondering what resolution is pretty much all about, that's what it is. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so now that you guys know my document size is uh, 19 by 1080. Basically, whatever document size, I guess this would work if you guys are using your own or if you're doing it for your own uh, overlay, right? Uh, whether whatever, excuse me, your own overlay camera, whatever your camera size happens to be, like whatever your resolution on your camera is, like basically is, is what your dimension should be in Photoshop, right? It makes it super more like easier for you guys to kind of like crop and all that cool stuff um but the reason why i use 1920 by 1080 is because it's basically the default right so i'm gonna go ahead once i have this document size going we're gonna take our rectangle tool which is basically you on the keyboard so you can press you on the keyboard and i uh, just like uh illustrator it has a fill and a stroke so if you guys want to turn on a fill just so you guys just kind of like see where it is whatnot uh because that's going to be used just the, the stroke of it not the fill okay so make sure your fill is uh, if it's on or whatnot right just turn it on this little like red dash so once you have this tool in hand, <laughs> all you have to do is click on the top left of this document size, right? And we're going to go to the bottom right of this document size and basically make ourselves a resolution of 1920 by 1080. Now what we're going to do is we're going to scale it down to a nice reasonable size for us to work in um, that kind of like help you can guys, you can put it in the own placing of your actual overlay if you guys want to, but control T on your keyboard, right? And we're going to hold alt and shift. The reason why we're holding alt is alt keeps it in the same orientation. And then holding shift will keep it the same exact uh, sizing, right? So now I can go ahead and shrink it to the size that I want it to be. We'll say right about there. Press OK. And what I'll do is I'm going to fit it in the middle of my uh, things here. which should be right here. Cool. So if you guys don't have any uh, actual uh, ruler set, just press Control r on your keyboard. And I'll do these over really quickly for you guys. You can see how you do it. Once you press Control r all you're going to do is take the left-hand side, drag where the middle should kind of like, I guess, would imagine where the middle is. And for me, actually, the middle is right here. I kind of moved it. I'm, I didn't move it beforehand, didn't I? So you can see these little snaps. Just snap it right in the middle where you believe the middle would be, right? And the same thing with the horizontal line. I'll see what it snaps right there. And then I'll make sure I put this in the middle just like so. It doesn't really matter too, too much. But as long as you put it somewhere in the middle of the crosshairs, you're good to go, right? So now that you have this going, you can press U and your keyboard again while selecting on this layer. That way, we can go to our stroke layer here. We're going to change this point to 13. This will make, of course, the stroke size be 13. And this is the default size that I personally use uh, in the uh, example that I showed you guys earlier. So <laughs> before we do pretty much anything, we're going to have to make sure we match what we have over here. So let me just make a copy of this really quickly. OK, and we're going to put this over here a little bit smaller just so you can see what, exactly just just to be able to see what's happening. I should put it in the middle right here, right? 
kind of see exactly we're just not, we're not copying it we're just giving you guys a reference and the closest ability that i could uh, i could so of course i'm going to show you guys exactly what i'm going to be doing i'm not going to like trace over it but at least i'll show you guys at least the same exact kind of angles okay so first things first as you guys see we have uh more of these little panels that are coming out to kind of highlight some of these little lines right here this line right here um a little spacing for something like this right here and a little bit of a little thing right there so pretty much i want to work on this shape itself uh, all right now at this point right so on this rectangle whatever we're gonna make a new layer and we're gonna use the pen tool now the reason is why i want you guys to use rulers please feel love god use rulers would be so much more helpful for you guys um is just so that you guys know where the middle is so when you make duplicates and stuff like that if i really quickly made an example for you guys you see how i'm starting off in the middle line right and then i'm gonna connect it right on this new layer we'll fill this in it doesn't really matter what color it is and uh, if I hold Alt Shift to make a duplicate of it, move it over. See if I press Control T uh, and flip it. I'm almost a human saturation. Control uh, T and flip it horizontal. You can see right this line right here would be basically what you would have to kind of put on the actual ruler line, make it purple. And so if you zoom out, you exactly you see how exactly it's exactly in the middle. And that's exactly why I want you guys to use uh, the rulers. It's just plain and simple, right? Please do so. Okay, new layer going, and let's do this part here. So. I'm gonna naturally always pretty much start like uh, like upper middle of your actual height here, just so you guys can you know kind of have that like I said that that duplication uh, easy uh, shortcut for you guys, right? Hold Shift to make all straight lines go down, right? We're gonna go over and I'm gonna do this one right here. So I'm gonna make sure I give myself enough height, which I think this should be quite enough, so I can put at least this little marking here, right? So don't forget about that. So for me, it looks like I went pretty much like a little less than halfway, and then I went down. So if I hold Shift, if you guys do not know, if you click on diagonals. Yeah, you get a perfect 35 degree angle, or I think it's 45. I think it's whatever, 35 or 45 degree angle. So if I hold shift and I click basically on a diagonal line, it doesn't really matter. Uh, if I did it like manually, you'll see that I can get like different angles anytime. But if you hold shift and click, you'll see you get that perfect nice degree. And you always can get that as long as you kind of, uh, you know, hold shift. You know what I mean? So we're going to hold shift again, make that straight line here. And we're going to give us like a little point here. The way I got that little point was pretty much doing it right at the end or the tip of the... Uh, little overlay sort of height here and then connect it just like so and that should be good let's just say that that's pretty good on this new layer we're gonna fill this in with any color whatsoever drop down color or whatever press ok doesn't really matter we're, you'll see that doesn't matter in a second just uh, delete that path right uh, to make a duplicate hold alt right you can drag and hold alt you'll see that it makes a duplicate for you if you let go as you now, now you see this uh, layer 24 copy but if you hold alt and then shift it'll if you move it over to the right it'll make sure you keep on that same exact axis and that's what you want so once you have this copy good right you press Control t for the free transform and then right click flip horizontal and like i said before take this line right here match this up to here oh as you can see it's a little bit it's like a, it's a pixel off so you just move it one more over and press OK. I don't know why it's a pixel off, but as you can see now, we're perfectly right in the middle and we're good to go there. But we're gonna do one more part, which is like basically this little part right here and like up here. But we're gonna do that in one little uh, pen tooling session, right? So once again, make a new layer, simply click in the middle section. Oh, I can tell that this is actually what's supposed to be there. All right, I was tripping for a second. You guys saw how it was like a pixel off. I moved over left a little bit more. As you see, it was off a little bit. I moved it back over for some reason. I guess it was like a visual Photoshop glitch. Not now we're definitely in the middle, right? So click somewhere in the middle, right here, right, and go drop down, hold shift, right, go around just like so. Um, actually, you don't need to do that. Just click once. Don't do it twice because we're gonna go back around like from the top and go all the way around again then to connect it. So be sure not to do that. Just click once, right. And then we're going to hold shift to that straight line. And then basically for here, we're just going to simply say, like, this is a pretty good... Oh, we'll do a little bit more. No, that's a little too much. About maybe like here. You see how, like, this much spacing? I want a little bit... Just basically that little bit more. Um, maybe even a little less. So I'll go, like, right here. Okay? Right? So I'm going to click hold shift to make those straight lines. I'm going to go in right about here. Holding shift again so I can make that nice cool diagonal line. And we'll then go ahead... I'm going to pick... Right there. And then I'm going to go ahead... Hold shift to make a straight line, do this part right here, so kind of like a little more spacing, right? You have a little bit, a little bit of space. You guys can make it a little more even, so I'll kind of move it up a little bit more, right? And then simply go ahead, hold shift, and go like so, and then go back to the middle. Hold shift, click on it. Hold shift, click on the top. Hold shift, go around it. I'm holding shift. Just make sure you guys know, hold shift is the name of the game to make these straight lines. And as you can see, the reason why I did that is so now if I make a new layer, okay? We're going to fill this layer in, right? Delete the path. Now, if I just quickly unhide the layers, if I press Control T, you'll see that it gives me a really direct middle line. That's exactly what we want. So, 
Of course, hold Alt and Shift, move it over, Control T to free transform, flip it horizontal, take this line, match it up. You'll see it'll highlight purple right there, as you can see, and I'm press OK. And now we have a perfectly sort of cool, um, that little kind of shape that I have here. I didn't put my name tag in there. We're not going to do that. It doesn't really matter. That you'll see, you you guys will kind of understand how to do that, right? You simply just kind of like make one of these, you know what I mean? To put the name tag in there. And uh, if you guys want to do that, you would do that right now. Just so be, just do that right now because otherwise you're going to have to do it over again, like uh, find the layers and then merge them together. Because right now, guess what we're going to be doing is taking all of these layers that we just did. So let's minus this one, right? So all these things right here, all these layers, we're merging them together immediately. Okay. If you guys want to, you can group them together first with a control G uh, and then make a duplicate by pressing control J. And then if you want to save them just in case you ever messed up or something like that, then you have this. But make sure you have these layers merged together. Okay. So that doesn't get confusing for a second. I'm going to get rid of my example uh, layer. I'm going to go ahead. And with these rulers, I'm going to press marquee tool. The, uh, excuse me, press M my keyboard for the rectangle marquee tool. Right? So on this layer here, we're going to call this overlay, whatever. Uh, it's going to change in a second anyway. Right? You click on the middle of your ruler line. You go to scroll all the way down to make sure you have all this highlighted on one side. Right? So what you can do on this overlay layer, excuse me, is uh, right click layer via cut. Oh, Jesus. So my nose. Um, layer via cut will allow you then to have two separate sides. Press Control H. To, you can press Control H by the way to hide and unhide your layers, right? So you're gonna have one layer here, cut. One layer here, cut. And this is what we want. Reason being is we're gonna use a really cool gradient. So we're gonna double click on this first left hand side. We're gonna go to gradient overlay. We're gonna go to gradients right here. And I have one already preset. So this is the colors that you guys can use for yourselves right now. The left hand side should not change the color at all, right? I'm gonna tell you that for a second, right? Your hex code is 0C, 0C, 0C. Very simple sort of black, right? But it's not quite there at the black mark. It's sort of like right below that uh, or a little more above that in that grayscale. Press okay. On the right hand side, there's a nice little uh, blue hued sort of like gray tone, which hex code happens to be 1E2128. Now this is where, this is my, if you wanted a blue sort of header, I would keep this as this color right here. But if you wanted something like a red hue, once you have this hex code here and you're right here, only just take the hue scroll bar and then move it just like so. If you wanted a little more red hue, then you would take this side and just move the red to basically to a red. And if you wanted a purple, move it to the purple. If you wanted like a, a yellow, move it to a yellow. This is where you should change your color is for this uh, kind of style to work in your favor, okay? Otherwise, you can keep it as a nice little blue and you're good to go, which mine I'm gonna switch to again. Press okay. <clears throat> cool, so now that I have this, you, uh, this is gonna get really awkward. Let me just make this black for a second so you guys can really see what's going on here. So if I go over here, back to my uh, my gradient overlay, as you can see, I already have my angle already set because I did this previously, right? But if I just put my angle to zero, you'll see how the light, basically make sure the light side is on the right-hand side where the middle is, right? Otherwise, you can you probably be like, this angle, right? If I just reset alignment, make sure your scale also is at 115, we'll say. Make it a little bit more easier, okay? Right, you move your angle around so the light hand side gets to excuse me, the light side gets to the like the right hand side. So for me, that would be zero. Sometimes I'm gonna just gonna repeat. It might be different for you for some odd reason. Um, just make sure that's on the right hand side. And your scale's at 115. You're all good. Press OK. Make a layer copies of this layer style. Right on this uh, layer right here. Make a copy of it. Then right click on this layer and then paste that layer. Right. What is gonna be different though is the angle of the um, how do you say uh the angle of this little gradient overlay here. So you're just gonna simply just match the opposite side. So if it's at zero, of course, that's gonna be negative 180 to be on the opposite side flipped to be perfectly. See how these nice little white, uh, little light, the lighter sides match up together. That is what you want. So if you, for some reason, are at like 125, go directly uh, the opposite side of that, that'll be like negative 60, just so, just so you have like a reference, right? But this for me is gonna be 180, scales at 115, and we're gonna press okay, normal opacity, all that cool stuff, right? So then you have this. Cool. Now you basically have this sort of outlining part that's going on right here. So what I'm going to do now <clears throat> is uh, we can just do this part as well quickly, right? I'm going to get rid of the example again. We're going to go ahead and take these two layers, control click on them to select both of them at the same time. Press control G and then press control J and then press control E. That's the very simple control J is duplication. Control E is merge it all together. So you're going to have two layers of the same thing. Okay. I'm going to just going to call this, this is our overlay base uh, overlay base. Okay. Double click on this, and this is gonna be called our stroke, okay? Reason being is, we well, guess we're gonna be doing rows, we're adding a stroke, okay? So on this stroke, you wanna put it on the inside of the position, usually it's default outside, okay? You wanna take your size and put it at one, and then take uh, the blend mode, put it on overlay, make your color white, pure white, and uh, your overlay opacity could be at like 50. 
it doesn't really it doesn't really matter too much as you can see that's what i did i press enter and i'm good to go um i'm gonna go ahead and like immediately rasterize this layer style that way we're gonna change this blend mode again to overlay uh ooh. before we do that before we do that before we do that as you saw you saw my little mistake there so you just make the same mistake it's because before you rasterize it, lower your fill all the way down to zero. That'll get rid of the picture and only allow the layer style to stay. That's what we want. And then I'm going to rasterize it, and then I'm going to put it back on overlay. And as you can see, it won't make that mistake again. It'll basically be like this layer has now uh, an inner, uh, a stroke on it, but it is an, oh, the stroke is no longer there, so we can erase it very easily. So we're going to take this little masking tool here, press B on our keyboard, and we're going to use the color black when the mask is white, and that'll erase for us with any soft brush. And I'm going to erase some of these little corners, and as you'll see, that'll add that cool little sharpen effect that you guys basically see right here, right? And that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm erasing, erasing in a little few spots. So, uh, yeah, now we have that little sort of sharpen. It's pretty cool and good to go. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make a new layer right above the overlay base. Uh, above the stroke, it doesn't really matter. Just make sure it's over, uh, over the overlay base. And I'm going to make this little shape right here. So simply, all I pretty much did was kind of like lined uh, this little like right hand side part, right? I'm gonna line like right here. I'm gonna take a ruler and put the lining right there. <clears throat> and then I also want to make sure maybe I align this sort of part, make it a little bit more below this like height right here. So now I know this is where I want to start off my point. That's right here. Okay. Hold Shift for that 35 degree angle. I'm gonna click a little further down. I'll say right about there is pretty cool. Perfect. Right. And. Uh, I'm going to hold shift, make a straight line, and I'm going to hold shift again for that 35 degree angle, but I make sure I go up to this blue line here, and then I connect it just like so. Uh, before I do that, I did go some up and downs. So let's do some up and downs, right? I'm going to hold shift. You can't really see on the line, but you see this, this darker blue point, uh, darker blue line happens to be my pen tool line, okay? Holding shift to go down like to the bottom right here, like right there, holding shift again, and then holding shift again. All these angles, you will see, you'll, you'll see they're basically perfect just because we're holding shift, and you click on this. And now you have this layer right here, or this little like little masking of the same shape here on this new layer. Fill it in with the color, um, whatever side this is on. So I'm gonna click right here. Basically, like, just click on the base color of your uh, happen, what your overlay happens to be. Okay, it doesn't really matter too much because it'll be changing in a second with the hue and saturation. So press OK, press OK again, and then you'll have that all set for yourselves. And we're gonna delete that path, and we're gonna move out. I uh, hid my uh, layers really quick. So now you can see that this layer is the same color as uh, basically one of these sides. It looks a little, it looks like a gradient right now because it's on top of another gradient, so it doesn't matter. Right now, all you can do is press Control U on your keyboard, go to the lightness, and drop this down until it gets pretty dark. I would say right about here. Okay. Now it kind of looks like it's a little bit of an indention. Before it actually looks like an indention. However, double click on this layer, go to stroke, inside opacity at uh, uh, 50%. And I'm gonna just lower this down just a little bit more, maybe like 35 or so. And as you can see, it looks like a nice little clean indention spot, and uh, you're pretty much good to go on that aspect. I can see that this angle doesn't matter, match this angle just quite yet, but if for, for your reference, this is why you might want to make duplicates, is because I would change that personally if it was for me, because it looks kind of aesthetically off, but whatever, it doesn't matter right now. And this little stroke little thing that I did right here as well, I just made a new layer really quickly, right? Take my pen tool, click, hold shift, click, hold shift, click click very simple right kind of made an outline of that I'll move it down a little bit <clears throat> what i did was i made my brush setting so press b on your keyboard to bring up your brush right right click to bring up these little size and hardness things change your size to one change your hardness to 100 make sure you have like the soft brush selected and then make sure you change the hardness right make sure you have a soft brush connected at least make sure you have like a brush that looks something like this right already okay so then you can press p on your keyboard bring up the pen tool it's still there right right click stroke path drop down use the brush tool this will take the settings of the brush we're going to press ok before you do that actually change this right here to uh the color that you want so i'm going to use orange okay reason why we're changing our foreground color it takes the color of your foreground color when you do this so stroke path brush press ok and delete as you can see now it's orange we can take our eraser soft brush eraser change your hardness back to zero if it's not already and then you can simply just erase these corners here and now you have this nice little part right there cool so now that I have this, what I might personally want to do is make a duplicate of the, or group this together, right? Make a duplicate of this and then move it over. So now I know that I'm just going to line it up with this part right here. So basically, if I put another ruler in for a second on this side, make sure I line that ruler here. And I'm just going to make sure I have this part lined 
right there and that will make sure that I perfectly have it where the middle should be. So now we have that little part there and it looks pretty cool. Um, this is, by the way, all sort of like, you can do anything you want, by the way, just chill out. You don't have to do exactly what I'm doing. Um, I'm gonna do this little, little diamond thing, I guess you can say. I'm gonna go below the overlay base. Use my rulers, we're just gonna simply just do that really quickly. We're gonna drop uh, down and use color, right? Right click, fill, use color. I'm gonna use this orange, press okay, press okay again. Delete the path, of course, simple stuff. Hold the alt and shift, flip it horizontal and uh should start becoming like a little nicer quicker for you right mine does have a little bit of a little uh gradient to it so if you want to you can put this nice little uh inner glow to it make this inner glow white uh actually make it like a light orange so click on the orange that you have move it all like a little more you see like top left press ok change your blend mode to linear dodge add take your uh size put it up a little bit and take your opacity drop it down so you get like a nice cool little like shape right there it's pretty nice how i did it's how i did that right there um, we're going to skip these little things here only because actually whatever we'll just do it again right below the base as you can see right we're going to call this by the way we're going to group those these two things together and call this like diamond um right on this new layer if you guys would like you guys can go ahead and make these little sort of like little things all i basically did was something like this right i'll just do two of them whatever i should be holding shift i wasn't in that time move this down to about here and let's just i'm gonna make two of them doesn't really matter right click fill these in and uh, we're just gonna make one of them white. So all I'm gonna do is pretty much, uh, I should just like mask it out, cut it. As you can see, I just cut it out with the uh, marquee tool that we did in the beginning. Um, color overlay, make this white. I could just also have done control U and make my lightness all the way up to 100, right? So you have these two things now. And what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and uh, group these together. Alt, Shift, duplicate it over. Control T, flip horizontal and move this to where you believe it should be right about there, right? Okay, that's good right there. Um, also, let's do this part right here as well, this little glowing bar, which is a pretty good uh, kind of like standard here. So make sure you all this is below the base, right? That orange little layer now is below the base, so you guys know exactly. Take our pen tool, and uh, I guess you can, I'm gonna guess where the middle is. If you guys really wanna make sure you do this perfectly, just do as we were doing before. I'm, I'm not rushing in a sense, but I'm kind of like more like experience guessing, right? But if you guys wanted to, you can start off in the middle like we were doing before, going over, Holding shift going up, right, to where the middle would be. Uh, I'll say, like, I want to go more right here, right? And then I go up, just like so. Go over, come down, go over and connect it in the middle. If you guys want to make sure you kind of have that middle thing, right? So I'm going to fill this in. It should be orange automatically once I delete the path. Go up, you see it's now orange, right? What I did was right click, fill, drop down, use color, make sure I have that orange select that I've been using all across the entire time. Orange right delete the path as you can see now it's a nice little orange bar now if i wanted to you can hold alt shift to make that copy oops with the movement tool by the way i don't know if i made uh, i'm pressing v on the keyboard to make sure i have that movement tool selected okay alt shift drag it over Control t flip it horizontal make sure this line here matches with this middle line that we've been made uh we've made in the beginning with the rulers make sure it's going to turn purple and now we have that all matched up cool and i'm gonna get rid of this because now it's gonna get a little bit confusing there we go Okay, so now all I did pretty much here was I pretty much went ahead and said, hey, let's make a new layer. Uh, we'll make a new layer right above these two things, these two copies. We'll just make a group of it. This is called the, uh, we're going to call this the, the color bars. Okay, on this new layer, we're going to take our brush here. Okay, I'm going to select this orange. Now I'm going to go ahead. Or did I use a, uh... no, I think I did use a brush, right? Take a brush, soft brush, hold shift. Just simply like a little soft brush here. I'm gonna change the linear dodge add, and I'm gonna lower this opacity just like so. And uh, just kind of, it's kind of whatever kind of glow you might have. I want to make sure I don't leak it out. There we go, something like that, right? Now I'm just gonna take the same exact layer and move it over. All right, so it looks something like this. So any sort of like little uh, glowy kind of like little blurry whatever, it's gonna look like a light in a sense, right? So that's pretty much what I have going on right there. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and say that pretty looks pretty good, okay? So, uh, oh, I did also miss this little orange thing. You guys already know how I do that, right? So pen tool, click up, just like so. Change my brush settings to one size, 100 hardness, okay? Pen tool marking, uh, it's already orange on the foreground color, press okay. As you can see, we have a little orange little thing right there now. Perfect, cool. So after this part here, uh, is this little bottom piece here. So pretty much, again, make sure your rulers are up. We're all, but this is all below the base. We're gonna take all of this stuff 
and we're gonna call this like effects okay for the below the base we're gonna make this orange ah excuse me yellow right make a new layer below the, all the effects in our keyboard right and we're gonna go to the tip of this click on that we're holding shift for that nice little good diagonal line um whatever good like amount of size you think you might need i think this is okay we might need to go a little bit larger a little further down i'll say this is okay for now um for reference i i would be a little more like hesitant in a sense of like a little more calculated in a way but i'm just more or less guessing like the height that i want to have this here i can already tell it's a little bit too big so i'm gonna move this up a little bit more okay and then simply fill path because you guys already know what we're gonna be doing right hopefully right we're gonna hold alt shift move this over control t make sure these are all lined up right because for the color you guys know that we did press enter Oop, move this up one for the color you know what we did we did the double click on this and uh gradient overlay right so if you want to go back and copy the gradient overlay or if you had to uh once you kind of fix the gradient overlay if you had a different color or whatever just press new and it'll oh, my hair uh press new and it'll make a nice little new swatch for you guys just so you guys know okay and uh press okay and we're gonna make sure this is at zero for the light side is on the right hand side right we're gonna copy this layer style paste it here and we're gonna make sure that the white is on uh the lighter side is on the other side so once it's 180 now press okay and as you can see we're good to go there okay so now for this part here what did i ended up doing was doing this okay so we're gonna make a new layer pretty much kind of like guessing where i'm gonna want to have it like right here maybe holding shift for that nice little diagonal line go to the middle go up and then something like this connect it right and if is this actually straight is that good oh nice good clutch uh should be a little more further up to about here so also make sure this is still in that nice diagonal so on this part here it's a little as you can see it's a little more skinnier than this but for the reference just so you guys know that's kind of why right i'm gonna fill this in with any color we're gonna make a sh uh, alt shift drag flip this horizontal this is all rinse and repeat stuff so i'm going a little bit more faster because you guys pretty much already know the entire like uh i guess it's like uh i guess shortcuts to this stuff now right hopefully um move this up one and so now i'm gonna go ahead and merge it together and I'm gonna go ahead, double click on this, change the color really quickly to like one of the colors that are closest to the middle. Just basically click in the middle, right? For just so you have like a nice solid base color. Press okay, I'm gonna rasterize this layer, okay? Um, press control U on our keyboard and take our lightness and just drop this down to a pretty good color like this. Okay, just a little more darker basically. That's looking pretty solid. Oh, it's super, super skinny compared to the other one, but yeah, that's a yikes. Can I also just like for like quick fix? Can I just do this? I mean, I could. I would not do that, by the way. But for quick fix, just to make it a little more thicker, I just kind of like moved it and stretched it. What I want to do that because you're gonna stretch your pixels. You don't want to do that. Okay. So on this new layer here, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna call this so you guys don't get lost. We're gonna call this like black inner bar. Okay. And this stuff right here is gonna group this together. This is basically being called like the the housing for the 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 links sure right and uh right so this is the black inner bar so i'm gonna make a duplicate of the black inner bar okay i'm gonna lower the fill down on this double click on this and we're gonna go to pattern overlay and we're gonna choose a pattern if you guys don't have any patterns of course the pattern pack uh, it's only for three dollars on selfie.com slash so hq and uh once you kind of click on one that you like and or you can use a texture whatever it's just, just kind of like to decipher uh i guess like give it texture in a way right and I'm gonna rasterize this. Once I have the rasterize, make sure your fill is on zero, by the way. I can then control U and make sure this is black. That's why I wanna make sure I wanna have it as black. And the reason why I do that, I also have more control if I wanna go ahead and just change the color of it to orange or something like that. For any of you who wants to like give that a shot, I don't know why, just, just so you know, that's how you would change the colors. This is now the pattern layer. Okay, so now I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and let's do like the inner little triangle part right here really quickly. So for that, all I pretty much did was uh, as you probably guessed we're gonna make a new layer and we're gonna make a simple little triangle thing like so and i'm gonna fill this in with any color because we're naturally gonna use in the gradient by the way so uh alt and excuse me alt and shift move it over Control t to free transform and then flip horizontal put it in the middle just like that right i'm gonna hold these two uh i'm gonna hold Control, click on these two layers together right and merge them together with Control e Okay, so you're going to have this layer right here. So on, I believe we should be on the uh, clipping mask to the black inner bar. I forgot this part, but we should be clipping mask to the black inner bar. Okay, so this is the little middle section, the little middle triangle. 
okay? And for this, we're gonna double click on this and just change it to the gradient that we've been using the entire time. And then change the angle so that it basically looks like pretty nice, right? We're gonna change it to like this. Maybe even change it to linear dodge add. No, 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 actually let's not do that because the thing is not the same color. So maybe the middle triangle, let's change this really quickly, the middle triangle to the color of like this, rasterize this, and then try to do the uh, linear dodge add. Just like so. Yeah, perfect. Linear dodge add. So make sure you change the triangle color to one of the colors that are on the overlay base. So basically click in the middle again, right? How we did the actual, um, uh, what do we call it? The black inner bar, basically, right? So linear dodge add, lower the opacity down. So going to have this nice little thing right here. Now, all I did for this was hold alt. And if you drag, if you're holding alt, it'll make a duplicate. That's kind of like the whole duplicate shortcut thing. So if you hold alt and drag a layer below another layer, it'll make a duplicate of it. So for this, I'm going to turn off the uh, gradient overlay on this duplicated middle triangle. Move it over to the left, take another uh, duplicate, right? Move it over to the right, and I'm merging two layers together. So it acts basically like a nice cool little one layer section of like a bigger kind of thing, a uh, bigger middle triangle. Double click on this. We're gonna change this to orange, just like so. Press OK. Uh, right click, rash the layer style. And uh, basically all I did was just change the color, right? So press the eraser, soft press eraser, and just kind of give it a nice little, little highlight right there. Right, cool. And as you guys can guess, for this little piece right here, uh, I don't have any of the symbols, but that's just whatever, right? And uh, I'm gonna go right above the uh, little middle triangle stuff that we did. So right below the pattern, right? Uh, I'm gonna go ahead, kind of just say like, let's just say we'll take this part off here, right? Uh, a little less, I kind of wanna just have it like so. Right, so this part here, whatever, whatever you're doing right here, just go around it. All you're gonna be pretty much focusing on is this part right here, right? this little inner uh, little box here. So you make a pen tool going uh, through here, just giving you guys a little bit of a space. So this is gonna like fill in right here. Cause what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually just uh, clip mask this right below the middle triangle copy actually. So drag this like, below the middle copy, uh, middle triangle copy. We're getting, it's getting a little bit sloppy. I apologize, but hopefully you guys understand a little bit, right? Right, fill this color in with one of the base colors, which should be like, we're just gonna click right here, right? One of the base colors, delete the path. So you're gonna have it, you can't really see it kind of, right? You can still see it right there, right moving. So double click on this, simply gradient overlay, linear dodge add, you can make this a little bit more powerful. And if you want to as well, outer glow, all I did was like change my uh, size and such, as you can see, you get that little orange glow to it. And I press okay. That looks pretty good there. And all you gotta do is just basically make a duplicate of it, holding alt and shift, moving it over, flip it horizontal, and then drag it where you believe it should be on the right hand side here. And uh, that is then when you put your actual little icons in here. But uh, like I, you probably just saw, I forgot to put the icons in. Uh, make a little section for the icons, but just pretend there's icons in here now. Um, and then last but not least, this little middle bar, glowing bar on the bottom. Pretty simple, you probably you probably already know how to do it by just all this cool stuff we've been doing already, right? Click, hold shift for that angle, and go to the middle. Fill this in with orange, uh, just like so. Drop the color orange, delete the path. Alt and shift, drag it over, control T, flip it horizontal, make sure these are now connected, just like so. I'm gonna combine these two layers together now with holding control click to click on both of them, right? Holding control to click on both of them, control E. I'm gonna personally just use my arrow keys and move it up a little bit more. And once I've done that, I'm gonna double click on this. We're gonna go ahead and go to outer glow. And we're gonna take our opacity, just lower this down. And we're gonna take our size, maybe like lower this down as well. And then maybe even give this an inner glow, right? So my inner glow settings for this would be linear dodge add, 35 opacity, I already have it set as you can see, and make it uh, a little more of a lesser orange. So click on, you can use the same orange, but just click over top left a little bit more, press okay. And then choke zero size uh, at four and uh, all that cool stuff, press okay. And then you have a nice little simple orange glow on the bottom. <sighs> okay. So personally, it took 30, that's not bad. It just took me an hour to do when I was kind of like convincing myself how I'm gonna do it. But uh, yeah, as you can see, that is a really cool overlay. And naturally, when you put it in OBS and whatnot, you would put your text in here. So we're gonna put like Twitch. Nah, we'll just put Seso HQ. Right, this is how you know. You can put it right above everything. We're just gonna do this all together really quickly, right? Group that all together. And this is where you would have your text and all that cool stuff. Let's get rid of this for a second. Oh, this should be grouped as well. Get in there, bud. I lost it, put it right on the top. The stroke thing should be always on the top, okay? And I'm gonna get rid of this for a second. 
So this is where you would put like all your text would be like in this little box here for your like whatever recent subscribers, recent whatever. And if you guys need to, you make another, maybe make another like sort of like thing going down as well to make another housing for maybe if you want more stuff or put on the top or something like that, right? Do the same thing you did on the bottom, but on the top like reverse, right? So you'd have it go in this way and not like down this way, okay? But like this. It's the same thing essentially, right? Yeah, I guess you would say so. Um, right, so looks really cool. Now, just to quickly know how you, how, how you would save it, all you would do is make sure you take your background, you have it off, okay? Make sure you don't put that text in there either. This is for like afterwards, right? So once you have your background off, you can then, with this all everything grouped, you can just move it over to where you wanna have it. If you need to, you can control T and move it and like shrink it down if you need to as well. Maybe it's too big or whatnot. As long as you're shrinking and not making it smaller. Uh, but I'm finding that little mistake that I didn't put in the middle here. Whoopsie. There we go. You see a little how the mistakes come into handy. Uh, come in. We just got to move it over a little bit, right? Anyway, if you need to shrink it, you can shrink it. Otherwise, you can just merge the layer together, actually. You can just probably merge it together, actually, too. So before you shrink it, you probably just, like, make a duplicate of it. Control J of that copy and Control E and merge it all together. And now it's just one full thing. And then you can just, you know, like, shrink it and stuff like that. You won't ever have to worry about having to move everything over. So if you want to shrink it to where you want to have it, right? And then all you have to do to save is one, make sure you have your background turned off. You go to File, Export, Save for Web. And then you just make sure you save it as PNG 24 and it has that background all nice and, uh, uh, how do you say, empty. And also all, all your glows are going to be there as well. So make sure you add a glow to so whoever you want to add a glow to. And then you're all good to go when you save it and you throw it into your OBS and or YouTube video. Okay. There you guys go. So, of course, if you guys would like the PSD, that's 200 likes. So, just make sure you guys click the like button, share it around, all that good stuff. And I hope you guys enjoyed today's video today, actually. So, I'm, I'm super white right now because all the white screens. Um... Yo, thank you so very much for watching all that cool stuff. Thank you all for just, I haven't really talked about it, but we've been gaining, a, I think I talked about it once, but we've been getting a lot of subscribers, like almost 60 daily. That's a little ridiculous. So if you guys are new to the channel, please like comment down so I can recognize your name a little bit, right? And of course, if you're not already following my Twitch, twitch.tv slash we always stream on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, all really cool th different things. You can join that community over. We hit 100 subs on Saturday, uh, Friday, which is pretty awesome. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Like once again, of course, comment down anything you want to see me do personally. Uh, also, if you guys want to tweet me one of the things that you might have made and kind of like mess around with a little bit, please go ahead and do so. As always, guys, thank you very much. If you're not subscribed already, you probably should go do that. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, we're going to go now. And also, who watched the KSI versus Logan Paul fight? Who do you think was going to win? And are you disappointed? Because I'm, I'm super highly disappointed on how it ended. Um, so, yeah, I'll tell you guys later. Sisway HQ out. Don't forget to keep smiling, stay positive, and stay freaking productive, guys. Later.